Hello friends, welcome back, hearty welcome to you. In this session, let's try to solve this applications of trigonometry or heights and distances interesting example. So let's go through this example and try to solve this together. At the foot of the mountain, the elevation of its summit is 45 degrees. At the foot of the mountain, the elevation of its summit is 45 degrees. After ascending a thousand meter towards the mountain up a slope of 30 degrees, the elevation is found to be 60 degrees. Find the height of the mountain. To understand this better, let us do the diagram for this. How the diagram will look like? First, let us say this is the ground. That's the ground we have. And let us say the summit is somewhere. Let us say the summit is there. So this is the summit. Okay, right. Now, let us say this is the foot of the mountain. So, so this is how the mountain is. You are just climbing it. So let us say this is the foot of the mountain. From the foot of the mountain, the elevation of its summit is 45 degrees. So this length is 45 degrees. So let's say that angle we will take it as 45 degrees. We will say that angle theta is equal to 45 degrees. Or we can directly say that angle is 45 degrees. Okay. Now after ascending a thousand meter towards the mountain up a slope of 30 degrees. That means you are going in this direction. You are ascending. So let us put that. We are ascending a height of thousand meter that means this length is thousand meter at an elevation of 30 degrees so that's what we did after ascending a thousand meter that means up the slope of 30 degrees you went for thousand meter that means this inclined distance is thousand meter and the angle is 30 degrees the elevation is found to be 60 degrees now from here from this particular point again I look at I found that the elevation is how much 60 degrees so let's do that we'll join these two that elevation is found to be 60 degrees so let me put that down that is 60 degrees okay now let's try to understand this at the foot of the mountain the elevation of its summit is 45 degrees so from here when I look it is 45 degrees after ascending the mountain that means I walked on wi uh, with the slope of 30 degrees I walked towards the summit up a slope of 30 degrees for 1000 meters from that point if I observe from that point if I observe the elevation is found to be 60 degrees now I have to find out the height of the mountain for that what we will do first we will give names to them alphabets let us say A here this is B this is C we have this point is D let us say this is E ok we will also get couple of more points this point we will call it as E anything else we need we have A B C D E and this cannot be E it has to be F so let's put it as F there you go ok now what you see now there are three triangles what are the triangles we have let's note them down what are the triangles we have the first triangle is the small triangle triangle ADF triangle ADF what is the other triangle we have the other triangle we have is triangle DCF that's the other triangle we have triangle DCF there is also another triangle that triangle is nothing but the big triangle that is triangle ABC so we will look at these triangles and we know the angle so we will leverage them we will try to find it out so let's go to the first step 
triangle ADF what I can understand from triangle ADF we know angle is 30 degrees how triangle ADF looks like looks like this triangle ADF you have thousand there and this is A and this is D and this is F so and we know this angle is how much 30 degrees so now let us find it out we will give some alphabet name so that it's easy let us say this is Y this is X this is also X because it is rectangle let us say this length is H2 that height is H2 this also will be H2 because it's a rectangle let us say this is H1 now we have to find out the height of the mountain that is nothing but H1 plus H2 okay now first triangle we have taken triangle ADF we have 30 degrees angle now what is AF according to us this is Y and this is H2 now we can easily find out H2 and Y with the help of this triangle so let us write it down sin 30 is equal to opposite by hypotenuse that is H2 by 1000 which tells me H2 equal to 500 you should be okay with that because sin 30 is 1 by 2 1 by 2 into 1000 is 500 similarly let's go to the other one cos 30 degrees is equal to adjacent by hypotenuse that's nothing but y by 1000 or y equal to 1000 into cos 30 that's nothing but equal to 500 root 3 so we got h2 now we got y now okay now let's go to the other triangle we have that is triangle dcf in triangle dcf what information we have triangle is it dcf it is actually dce okay let me just put it down it's triangle dc e okay in triangle dce what we can find out let's write it down in triangle dce we have angle 60 degrees let me angle 60 degrees we have tan 60 is equal to opposite is h1 adjacent is x can i say h1 by x or that tells me h1 equal to tan 60 into x but what is tan 60 tan 60 is root 3 so can i say root 3x this is my equation number 1 h1 equal to root 3 into x now let's go to the triangle ABC what triangle ABC gives us we have ABC triangle the angle is 45 degrees can I say tan 45 is equal to opposite that is nothing but H1 plus H2 divided by adjacent is nothing but X plus Y because tan 45 means BC by AB BC is H1 plus H2 AB is x plus y you know that tan 45 is 1 so can i say h1 plus h2 equal to x plus y now we also know we want to find out h1 we already know h2 so let's find out h1 we will say h1 plus h2 is nothing but 500 is equal to x x is how we can write it we'll just put it as x only now plus y what is y 500 root 3 now we have to convert either h1 or x into the other so that we can find out x or h1 value we'll find out h1 value so we'll convert x into x as we will convert it as h1 by root 3 then we should be able to find out h1 so let's continue with that so but we know x equal to from here we know x equal to h1 by root 3 so let's substitute that our next step will be h1 plus 500 equal to x that is h1 by root 3 plus 500 root 3 so you multiply with root 3 throughout you will have 
h1 root 3 plus 500 root 3 equal to h1 plus 1500 or can we say h1 into root 3 minus 1 equal to 1500 minus 500 root 3 so can I say nothing but 500 root 3 into root 3 minus 1 now root 3 minus 1 root 3 minus 1 will cancel you will get h1 equal to 500 root 3 now what is the total height we want total height is h1 plus h2 that's equal to h1 is 500 root 3 just now we got h2 we know is already 500 so h1 plus h2 is nothing but 500 root 3 plus 500 or 500 into root 3 plus 1 500 into root 3 root 3 is 1.732 root 3 is 1.732 so that is equal to 500 into 1.732 plus 500 you simplify that you will have 866 plus 500 that's equal to 1366 meters is the total height of the mountain so let me repeat this how we have done that we have been given that you are at the foot of the mountain the inclination is 45 degrees after that you you ascended towards the mountain up a slope of 30 degrees for a distance of 1000 meter then from that particular point that means from point T you again looked at the summit C that's the summit you looked at the summit again when you looked at the summit the angle is now 60 degrees so we have to find out what is the total height we divided this into two parts h1 into h2 horizontal distances we made them as x and y you can see now triangles rectangles and again triangle there are three triangles here one triangle is ADF another triangle is ABC other triangle is DCE three triangles we have we can easily find out the variables h1 and h2 the first one will give you tan 60 equal to h1 by x the ABC triangle will give you tan 45 equal to h1 plus h2 by x plus y and the small triangle will give you sin 30 equal to h2 by 1000 cos 30 equal to y by 1000 so you can easily find out h2 and y then you can substitute those values in the other triangle equation and you can find out h1 and h2 h1 is equal to 500 root 3 and h2 equal to 500 when you add them so you will get your answer as 1366 now what is the difference in this particular problem generally whenever we do problems at 10th grade level we always look at walking towards the mountain on the horizontal line but for the first time we are looking on the inclined line we are looking at distance with respect to inclined perspective that means instead of taking horizontal distance we have to take inclined distance then we have to get their components vertically and horizontally so one more little bit step is added there other than that remaining all problem is same so this is how we can solve this interesting problem. I'll catch you again once again with another interesting example. Thanks for your time and support. Bye for now. Please do let me know your feedback by commenting in YouTube or you can drop me a mail to loveteachingmaths at gmail.com. Thanks again. Wish you all the best. Bye for now.